The 3500 from Fractal Design brings that simplistic Scandinavian appeal with easy to work in internals, great airflow and storage potential and comes in both the windowed or plain side panels for your preference. Hello everyone, this is Dimitri with Hardware Canucks and we travel to Monterey, California for NVIDIA's Editor's Day where we get a sneak peek at the upcoming technologies NVIDIA has been hard at work with that we'll cover in future videos but one of the main highlights the was the announcement of NVIDIA's latest Maxwell GPU, the GeForce GTX 980 and GTX 970. And up to this point, every Maxwell release has shown impressive results from the desktop 750Ti and later the 800M series notebook GPUs that with excellent power efficiency and optimized architecture really paved the way for Maxwell to truly shine in the graphics market. Nvidia has done some architectural changes with this new GM204 core while keeping to the same 28 nanometer manufacturing process. And actually earlier Maxwell releases really foreshadowed the direct towards reducing TDP while optimizing performance. So each CUDA core on these new GPUs is up to 40% faster than its predecessors. Also, this is the first GPU architecture to natively support Direct3D12. And coming on to the pricing of these cards, they are really well tuned to be competitive at $550 for GTX 980 and $329 for GTX 970. And with this pricing strategy, GTX 760 moves to $220, which is a $30 reduction and at this launch uh, the following cards are unfortunately being discontinued uh, as Maxwell takes over on the high-end spectrum. Specs wise we're looking at 2048 quarter cores on the 980 and 1664 on the 970 with higher base and boost clock on the more expensive card both with 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory on a 256 bit bus for improved higher resolution FPS and strictly off these specifications it doesn't really seem to offer that next level of confidence on performance but given the more efficient Maxwell architecture the GTX 980 outperformed uh, the more expensive 780 Ti in most of our benchmarks and so I left the best for last and Nvidia has been really pushing towards power efficiency and the total power draw for GTX 980 is only 165 watts while the 970 is just slightly below at 145 watts, both requiring two 6-pin PCI Express connectors. This means reduced heat output, reduced power draw for the entire system, and also quieter operation. All while maintaining extremely high clock frequencies for both the 980 and the 970. This is very impressive. For connectivity, each card is rocking dual-link DVI output, 3 DisplayPort 1.2 and an HDMI 2.0 port. So you can run up to 4 4K displays at 60Hz off a single card. We saw a triple 4K setup plugged into one card while the system was in SLI, so effectively utilizing the power of both GPUs but running uh, the total display output off a single card. And while triple monitor support is available on Kepler already, Maxwell brings this a step further with an addition of another monitor and also higher resolution output per channel. Also remember the game stream feature that was introduced with higher end Kepler cards. Uh, well, the encoder has been optimized to be two and a half times faster on the new Maxwell GPU. So potentially 4K gameplay capture uh, with shadow play without hindering performance. And also eventually 4K streaming to a potentially uh, a shield device. All right, so finally, let's take a look at the card itself. Uh, it's a simple reference design. It's a very beautiful card. Uh, it's the same length as the GTX 780 at 10 half inches or 267 millimeters with a standard blower type cooler, illuminated GeForce logo, and now with an aluminum backplate that will help to dissipate heat off the PCB, plus it looks uh, pretty cool, and the removable piece beside the power connector, it will help with airflow when in SLI, so removing that plate will grant extra airflow for the above GPU. And so now let's see how the GTX 980 performed under 1440p conditions. 
So Call of Duty Ghosts, it's the only game in our benchmarks uh, where the 780 Ti outperformed the 980. However, moving on to Battlefield 4, notice the much higher minimum frame rate is on the 980 compared to the 780 Ti. And with a similar result with Far Cry 3, again standing really strong among the other two GPU kings. And again, a much higher minimum frame rate uh, ceiling in Thief. For the rest of the titles, like Black Flag, they are almost neck to neck with just one FPS difference, very similar results across all cards for Hitman Absolution, and gaining more ground in Metro Last Light, um, but the general trend here, as you can see, is total domination for gaming, and the results are conclusive and revealing as to why Nvidia is discontinuing the 780 Ti, the 780 and the 770, as Maxwell is here to stay. And so these results are really impressive, as gaming performance really dominated the charts while keeping to an extremely low TDP uh, compared to Nvidia's previous cards and also compared to uh, AMD's flagship 290X. With plenty of headroom left for overclocking actually, and also thanks to this new GPU, multi 4K output is possible off a single card, while priced extremely competitively, uh, so now it'll be interesting to see how AMD responds to this uh, power efficient yet outperforming GPU. Only drawback we can mention would be availability, so we hope Nvidia is prepared uh, to fulfill the demand. So guys, what do you think of this price point and the discontinuation of those iconic 700 series cards? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Also, we have a full written review on hardwarecanucks.com with SLI benchmarks, 4K benchmarks, along with thermal imaging, power consumption and noise results and also overclocking tests. So make sure you visit our site to get the full details on this latest launch from Nvidia. So we hope you check it out. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.